Hello, this is Erica from the Davy Tree Expert Company. In this video, I am going to show you how to create a complete inventory project in iTree Eco. I'm going to start describing what you need to do at the point in the planning process after you've read the Eco Manual and decided that a complete inventory is the type of project that is best for your goals. The Eco Manual, along with many other resources, can be found at itreetools.org. So after creating an account on the website, um, and downloading the software suite, you're going to want to open Eco 6 and then go up to the File tab here and hit on New Project. This pop-up window comes up and you're going to choose in the right-hand corner here either Complete Inventory or Plot Sample. We're gonna, I'm going to do a Complete Inventory today. We want to name our project and specify the location where you're going to save your project. Now we start our project setup here. You want to choose your project name. This is going to be the name that's going to show up on the reports, charts, and graphs within the results. Your series name can be used to specify, say, your project name is a city and your series is going to be specific parks within the city or specific neighborhoods. And then our series year, uh, typically we like this to be the year that data was collected. That is especially useful if you're going to be doing repeat projects in the future. Now we go ahead and shoot, specify our location. We highly recommend that whatever location you specify in here is where you collect your data. So get as specific as you can with these designations. There's the question here of whether or not your study is in, a, in an urban area. Sometimes the software has the default that it has checked it. If it's not checked, then I suggest that you follow the guidelines um, to determine whether or not you are in an urban or rural area as the software defines it, um, which if it's an urban area, it's high population density, which is at least 500 people per square mile or 193 people per square kilometer. So if that is the situation within your study area, then make sure that that box is checked. Um, the software typically does default to filling in the population here, but if it does not, then you will also need to do, you will need to do that. Next, you will need to specify which weather and pollution year you would like to use for your project. These need to be the same year. And depending on which year you choose, your weather stations may, your weather station options may be different. So for instance, I know for Sacramento, if I choose an earlier year, I have more options for weather stations that are actually closer to the city. So once you have decided which year, open up the weather map and choose um, your weather station. All right, once your weather station is chosen, our last tab here for our project configuration is under um, the data collection option. So at a minimum, you're going to need to collect DBH and species, which are already checked here. You want to make sure you choose your units. And then it, the blue fields are highly recommended and the black fields are optional. And there are many options here. So make sure that depending on the goals of your project, you are choosing these in accordance with those goals. And then be aware, if you're going to check off the maintenance tasks, which I'm going to do here so I can show you those windows, these you can customize. And then if you check pests, you're going to have these different required fields that you're going to need to be um, collecting that you cannot customize but will show up on your data collection page. We also have some custom fields here, which you can read about. Um, again, that takes a little bit more um, upfront um, setup for your project. Before I leave this page, I want to talk about stratification. Now, what stratification is, is d dividing a project up into pieces. 
So for example, if you're collecting data at four different parks, you could stratify your project so that you can make comparisons between those parks. Or say you're collecting street trees in different neighborhoods. You could stratify your project to make comparisons between the street trees that are within those different neighborhoods. Regardless of if you're doing a project such as those examples I just gave, if you're just doing, say, street trees within a city and you don't want to divide it up, we still suggest that you click the strata box because what that's going to do is allow you to enter a specific sized area for your project. And in that instance, you're just going to have one stratum which I will show you how to do that in a minute here. So once you've chosen your the fields here that you're going to which data you're going to collect, you're going to click on OK. Now this window is going to come up if you did not choose to collect dieback um, or condition and dieback and percent dieback. Um, you can go ahead and read about that and make your choice. It's going to do some default to 10% um, if you choose not to collect that yourself. And then we get this pop-up window, and this is going to sh this is showing you what reports are available, and then the ones in red uh, text here are not going to be available, and that just has to do with what data fields we're choosing to to collect. All right, so now we can take a look at our maintenance. These are all customizable. This again, we're still on the project configuration tab. And you have four different uh, options here under the, the drop down in the drop down window. So if you just go to the first one, all of these are customizable. You can click on them and change them to be whatever you want them to be. Um, and the, all of this information is going to show up either in your mobile data collection page or you can export them um, as CSV up here um, and then incorporate them into your paper data sheets. If you've filled this in and you decide that that's not what you want to do, you can always hit your restore to defaults and then if you want to delete specific lines, you can, you can go ahead and do that as well. So you've got these maintenance recommended, maintenance tasks, again, all customizable, sidewalk conflicts, and utility conflicts. As far as your stratum goes, your strata area, this is where you're going to put in your size. So if you are just doing one, if you're just, I'm just doing Sacramento, that's all I'm gonna do. You can put that in here and then you can put an abbreviation in if you want and then you can go ahead and put in your area and because I chose English as my units um, I've got acres here so I'm going to go ahead and just put in a fictitious area. Now if we were going to do more than one then you're going to put something in here and you're going to give it an abbreviation and you're going to put in another area here. Now this is just defining your pieces of your project. Again, we recommend that you do it even if you're only going to have one size in here. Uh, the reason for that is it'll help refine your results a little bit more. All right, so you hit OK, and that's all set up in there. Um, these last two fields, not necessarily part of project setup, but it's nice to do it when you are setting up your project, is you can customize the benefit prices. So your electricity, heating, carbon, and avoided runoff. Again, the units that you see here are because I designated English in that project configuration mode on that sheet where we're looking at which data we're going to collect. So you can go ahead and change these. You can then also go back to the default. Once you're done customizing this, you can hit OK. And then the other one is annual costs. Um, this is really beneficial if you have, you can divide it up in two different ways. You can put in your costs, um, are, if they're public trees, you can put in your costs if they're private trees. This will total it. Um, over here to the right and down at the bottom and then you will see these dollar amounts show up in your results on the cost benefit tables that we have in those results when your project is done.
So after setting up your project, it is then time to collect your data. Uh, you can access paper forms at this button here. Um, there's different options here, so we would go to the complete inventory. If you have chosen to do some of the maintenance tasks and you've exported those as CSV, you can combine those onto this data tab, so cut and paste to complete a custom to uh, create a customized form depending on what your maintenance tasks are going to be. You can also use our mobile data collector, which um, you can check out videos um, on YouTube or our website about how to use the mobile data collector. All right, so if you have any questions, um, there's tons and tons of information here on the support tab. You can access the user guide, uh, the user guides, the user manual. You can access our video learning page. You can access our website, um, it, which is where you can always contact us at support. So this is where you would go to um, info at itreetools.org. So thank you very much for um, taking the time to watch this video. Uh, good luck with your projects, and uh, let us know if you have any questions.